Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. Today we have Scott Pulsini, uh, and he's going to go over a live order flow analysis with uh, stop runs and iceberg setups. He has very particular setups he's looking for uh, for CME futures products. Uh, I need to go through the risk disclaimer. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, a little bit about Scott. He's been trading for over 20 years, uh, and uh, you, we've had him on here several times. It's just uh, mostly for those that uh, are new uh, or being introduced to Scott. Uh, but uh, uh, he was written about in a book uh, by Dr. Brett Steenbarger, uh, and um, uh, was uh, you know sh shown here <laughs> that that uh, responsible for about 10% of the S&P E mini volumes uh, when the in between the years of 2002 and 2005. Uh, now Scott is focusing on both equities and futures. He's an expert scalper with an innate ability to quickly read the order flow and volume within price patterns. Okay, just um, uh, want to put this into the chat here for you. Uh, all of the different uh, links here. Uh, and contact information for Scott. If you're interested in reaching out to him, uh, he has a website here, his email, his Twitter. He has a trading room uh, that uh, uh, wetradedesk.com. Uh, there's special offers uh, from Scott for Bookmap here. Uh, and then here's also, uh, he has on our marketplace, uh, Scott has uh, 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 offered his um, educational course. Uh, there's actually three or four different, or I think three different educational courses that he offers here. Uh, one in particular is for the Stop Iceberg Tracker. Okay, so anyway, don't worry. I, I will put all of these links into the chat for you guys so you don't have to copy them down. You can you, you can click directly from the uh, chat box. Uh, I'll turn it right over to Scott. Thanks, Bruce. You hear me? Yes. Uh, great. Um, let me get my screen going here. <clears throat> Oh, I see uh, emails. I see. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me um, hold on one second here. All right. Let me get my book map. Yes. There you go. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, well, thanks for having me again. And, you know, I want to kind of more of an impromptu or uh, hopefully putting on some live trades and I want to talk about the SI indicator kind of clarify some things with it as well um, hopefully answer some questions it's been pretty slow today uh, but there's been a couple of good examples of you know how I use it um, so get right into it so if you know I've done a few webinars on this so far so you know I'm pretty sure most people know my back history you know I used to be a huge scalper back in the day, trade a ton of size, and, um, you know, I was in and out all day long, you know, trading every tick, and then computers took over, the algos took over, and kind of wiped me out where I couldn't make money anymore. I literally went from making millions to zero overnight, <clears throat> and I spent the next many, many years trying to reinvent my style where, you know, I could, you know, kind of use my fast processing, uh, my, my gift is, you know, fast mental processing, and I was trying to find a way to, you know, utilize that in the marketplace. And I just, you know, I, at, at one time I was one of the fastest in the world clicking a mouse, but I wasn't as fast as a computer. So that kind of drove me out of the uh, of the game and spent years uh, languishing, trying to figure out what I was doing and, you know, how to make money again. Not only could I not make millions, I couldn't make a dollar, right? So I literally had to leave the business in about 2013 and go into medical sales just because I couldn't make money anymore. And then uh, Dr. Brad, who, you mentioned earlier, wrote the book, uh, Enhancing Trader Performance. He put me in that book because he sat behind me for a year and watched me trade. And he contacted me about Bookmap and um, you know, told me, hey, this is kind of what you used to look at and it's in a different uh, format. And I think it really help you visually to understand what's going on in the market. And then the second I saw it, I'm like, this is it. This is, I'm back. Like, this is exactly what I need to be, become an elite million dollar trader again. Uh, and then it's just gotten better since then, right? So um, the most recent edition is what they call the uh, stop, I, stop Ice Indicator, SI Indicator, that Bookmap provides. Um, I'll get a little bit into that. I mean, that's what basically we're gonna be talking about today. Um, but that's basically showing you 
Um, and you can see it down here in this graph. It's showing graph. It's showing you um, stop runs uh, and icebergs. So icebergs are hidden orders that these uh, big houses put in the book um, that they don't want to put in the. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, not in the book, but they put in. They're hidden that they don't want to display visually, right? So you know, if a, if a big house has five thousand contracts, they need to that they want to buy and they they need to get that out. They can't just throw it in the book. They can, but the market will, these algos are designed to run away from big orders, right? So they have to like secretly put it in and, you know, you, you don't know where these orders are until they start trading into them. And this is what this information tells you, right? So this information is derived by um, <clears throat> uh, the CME MBO information. So you can Google this, read all about it, but every other data provider, uh, we'll get into the data providers, but that this this data is so enhanced where they can tell you know the book map um, developers can tell based on the orders and the way the orders come in the book the orders id order ids whether they're stop runs which is important we'll get into that um or icebergs and things like that so you can you can understand what's really happening at at your prices um instead of you know just trading off of you know most traders are trading off of this right and this is helpful and i'll get a little bit into this and how i you know how i look at this but you know when you're just using this you're only getting a, a fraction of the information that you need to be a successful trader yeah you know trading is probabilities and most traders that trade off chart patterns you know even the best in the world you know they can make money but they're still not getting the entire picture you're not i don't care how good you are at reading charts you're still you still don't have all the information about what's really going on real time right i want to know why you know for instance like um you know this is i'll use my little drawer guy here so this was like an overnight balance area right i want to know why this thing didn't break down right i want to know why it didn't continue right and when you have real-time volume that's going to tell you why the whys of, of what happens in the charts, right? It's not enough for me as a trader. You know, you hear all the time trading is a probability game and you know, you're only gonna be right 50% of the time. The top traders in the world are only right 50, 60, 70% of the time. 70% is incredible, but, um, and then you just have to accept, you know, so say you play this breakout and it reverses. I wanna know why it reversed. I, I, it's not sufficient for me as a trader mentally to be like, oh, well, you know, that's just my trading probabilities. I, I'm going to wait for my next breakout and try that one. That's not enough for me. I want to know as much as I can on why this didn't break down or why this didn't continue, right? It's not enough for me just to look at a chart. So, you know, that's why book map is so important to know, um, one, you know, kind of what's in the book as far as liquidity is concerned, meaning liquidity are these, you know, bright blue, orange bands. And you can see the algos here playing their games. So you can see them putting in, pulling, putting in, pulling. Um, some markets are, are more liquid, more algo driven than the other. Here's here's a look at, at gold. You think there's some uh, algos in this market? I mean, look at this thing. I call this the Christmas tree, right? It, look, it looks like a Christmas tree. Now, you got to remember, you are competing against not only the brightest minds in the world, you're, you're competing against the brightest minds in the world that develop computer programs that are, are designed to whipsaw you to death and take your money, right? Uh, retail traders, I am a retail trader now as well, are, you know, that were the food for these algos. <laughs> you got to you got to realize that, and you've got to understand that. You know this. You need you need programs like Bookmap and this kind of information down here to to understand what's going on. Because I can promise you, the big funds, the quant funds, the hedge funds, they all have this information. Why do you see? You know when you, when you see the earnings for Goldman Sachs, oh they made money 199 out of 200 trading days last year. Well, I mean, either they're cheating or they've got something that that most that the, the general public does not have. Right. And it's this kind of information. So I'm not saying they're cheating. I'm saying they have this kind of information. So now this information is readily available for us as retail traders. And I'm, I'm telling you, if you're not if you don't have this information, you don't have all you don't have the picture. I'm not saying you can't be a pro profitable trader, but you don't have you don't have all the information so good luck you know and most traders you know what, what's the percentage it's over 90 percent probably over 95 percent of all traders fail probably because 95 percent of traders just use this right this this is not enough to succeed in this business in my opinion right so when i was a big scalper all i traded off was this order book right this is the dome depth of market and that's what i traded off of and i'd watch how orders came into the book and i would 
I would base my trades off of, you know, the way the orders came in the book. And, you know, whether, and back then it was a lot more real, meaning if you saw a 2000 lot on the offer, say up here, you know, if I saw, if I'm looking at this and I would see like, you know, 2000 and 1500, and it, first of all, the order book used to be, literally be that thick. So if I wanted to sell, so say right here, I, I'm like, okay, I want to sell and I sell right here. I know if I'm wrong, I can turn around and peel out and, and, and buy into these orders so I can get out of my position, right? Nowadays, you can't do that um, as a big trader because the, the order book is so fleeting. So even if you see, you know, 2000 in the order book, it comes up here and it turns into a 20 lot, right? And that's not helpful. So the whole point is you need a program like Bookmap to understand where this liquidity is, what's real, what's not real, right? So it takes one second to glance at this and say, okay, what liquidity is real in here and what's not? This liquidity is real. This liquidity has been in here since last night. So I've had this running since last night. You can see the time here. I'm on uh, I'm on Pacific time. <clears throat> this, you think this is real versus this? I would say, right? So when when orders sit in the order book for this long, they are willing to take it. If something happens geopolitical and or you know some terrorist attack or whatever, they are willing. If this market rips through, they're willing to get filled. That tells you this is real. Is this real? Some of it, yeah. Some of it, no. This is more computers. So meaning this liquidity is different than this type of liquidity. This liquidity is algorithms playing their games and whipsawing traders to death. This liquidity is real. So my point is, this is kind of what I was telling you, like in the old days, you know, where you can see right here you know when this comes down so say if you wanted to be a buyer here um you know you can lean on this that there's real real orders that want to buy down here the other thing that you need to realize i've covered this in many of my webinars is another reason why bookmap is incredible knowing where this liquidity is these are like magnets for the market right the, this is the big money the big money wants to get filled down here guess what's going to happen the, this market will trade down here probably today if not in the next day or two and that's how these markets work is, you know, if you're if you're a novice and you just glance at this, you're like, oh, wow, I want to be a buyer here because look, yeah, I got nice. I got all this. Um, and that's my uh, those are my alerts. You might hear them going off. I'll get into that. That's one of the exciting things I want to talk about today. Um, it's alerts for the SI indicator. I'm going to quickly cover the liquidity stuff. So, like I said, a novice would say, I want to be buying here because I've got all this support down here that, that want to buy. And it's not going to it's not going to go through. It's actually the opposite. If you see liquidity bands. That's where the market is is going to go because you know why? Because the big money is going to make the market go there eventually. Trust me. And the reason I know that is because this is the game I used to play, right? I used to put. So you know, it, it wasn't this far away, but you know, just just for um, demonstration purposes, I would put like a two thousand lot on the on the in the order book as a bid, right? And then I would wait and I would wait and I so that I would st say I start selling here, right? I would sell like a hundred, two hundred. And I would judge how the market would react to my sell orders. Then I'd sell some more. I'd sell some more. Now all of a sudden I've got like you know 1,200 ES contracts on, and I'd see how it's reacting. If, if nothing's happening and, and, and no one's really jumping up and buying, then I would step on the gas and I would cause this cascading effect because I would tr I could trade up to like 3,000 contracts at the time, and I would cause this this cascading effect where people would see that other traders would see the big big orders coming through as sell orders, and they start to jump on my my um, uh, coattails and sell with me and I would cause this you know self-fulfilling sell and then it would just sell and it would sell right into my waiting bid right and then I'd be out I'd make 80 grand and <laughs> go home and you know go go get some lunch and that's exactly what these these houses are doing trust me and everything I talk about you know here and in my indicator I, you know Bruce was talking about the SI indicator course that I've made all that stuff is not hypothetical stuff that is that is stuff that I have that I, how I used to trade as a big trader. So I know exactly how the big money works because I used to be the big money. So um, the point is, you know, so you know, come in and I would get filled and you know, that that's how, that's how these guys make money. So this is what's, this market will head down here. And another, another thing I look at, um, you know, because a lot of times the futures don't have this kind of defined uh, liquidity like it does right now. I mean, you can, I'm almost positive this is going to happen today. If not, it's going to happen within the next day or two, right? This is going to come down in this area. That is very good information to know. So if you're finding areas on the chart where it's failing, like for instance, this is a good example of, I mean, this was overnight, so it's, you know, it's not as strong as a day balance area, but for this not to break out, 
and go higher. And now it's kind of languishing here. If we get back below this balance area that built overnight and we start breaking through these zones, I'll kind of cover that a little bit. We're going to that liquidity, right? That's, that liquidity is right around here, right? So that's how you kind of use your, that's how you kind of judge on how you want to, um, you know, develop a thesis on where the market's going. So that what I was going getting at here is the other thing I look at is the ETF volume, right? So here, this is just zoomed up. You think there's any algos in these ETFs, right? That's why they're very hard to trade minute by minute. But when you do something like this, I don't even know if it's in here, but it's been in here for the last five days. I mean, look at this. This is, if this is not telling on what's going to happen in the next few days, week, look at the volume, look at the resting volume. Again, if you're a novice, you look at, you're like, oh, I want to be a buyer, man. Look at all this support down here. This thing is going up. It's actually the opposite. This market, and I've shown this in the trade room. So I'm in the We Trade Desk uh, trade room that um, is run by the TAS guys. Uh, I present in there Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I talk about this all the time, right? So this is going to get down into this liquidity, right? This was, so when NASDAQ was way up here, it, it had the same look here, and then it finally traded into it. And now here we go again. So again, this doesn't mean we're gonna turn around and sell off right into this liquidity today. It could happen, right? My point is, when you're based on a thesis, you gotta, re you gotta know, hey, wait a second, do I really wanna be long here uh, long-term when I know that all the big money is below here and they wanna get filled? And they're going to get filled. You trust me, talk to me in about a week, and you, a week or two, and you tell me if this doesn't trade in all this liquidity, right? So again, you may be saying, well, how is that helpful for me today? You know unless we get closer to this, it may not be helpful for today. But the point is, you you know, you want to know where the big, the large-term large, large -term bias is, right? And when I talk about the SI indicator course, or I mean, um, the setups, it's the same exact thing, right? So yeah, the setups are golden across the board, long or short, but you know, you don't want to trade anything in a vacuum. You don't want to trade just book map in a vacuum. You don't want to trade the SI indicator in a vacuum. You don't want to trade the the bar charts in a vacuum. You want to use or task, right? So this is the other thing I use. I'll get into this a little bit too. You know, this is just basically mini market profile boxes um, drawn here, right? So you don't want to use any of this stuff in a vacuum. So this kind of shows me where support resistance is based on the current uh, market market trade, um, you know, the market volume, right? So I know supports there. I know resistance there. This is a 60 minute chart. This is 30. This is 10, right? So I kind of judge. You know, if this starts to break down, then I know in my mind, hey, and the NASDAQ, say this was NASDAQ, all that liquidity is below. And, um, you know, then I look for other things on my bar chart. But the point is I use everything in conjunction. And then I use my SI indicator information to take the trade, right? To, and what, what this SI indicator stuff does as well, and we'll get into that now, is the stuff down here. It helps you, one, know what's happening in real time, knowing what the big money is trying to accomplish. But it also helps you control your risk, right? So if you get a setup, so if you want to be short, so let me, uh, I'm going to give you an example. Actually, I might have stopped into this trade already. Uh, I want to get short beans if it cracks. I think it was the 97 level, and I'm going to show you why. I didn't want to. I want to go over the SI indicator before I start showing you trades, but I just want to show you. Let's do that. There you go. Right. So this is important. And we'll get into this, right? So this is this is the open. This was a stop run, right? This was a big stop run. This is almost 800 sell stops. Why is this important? Sell stops, buy stops are mostly, if not all, retail traders. And I call dumb money, uninformed traders. Don't be insulted by that. I'm a retail trader as well. What I mean by dumb, meaning they are not as informed, we're not as informed as the big money, right? We just, we don't have the resources. We don't, we don't know everything they know and they know, that's why they make money 199 and 200 trading days because they know stuff that we don't know. That's what you have to realize, right? So that's who we're competing against. But I wanna know when markets move, is it the dumb money or is it is it big money pushing the market, right? So this move on the open from here to here, I'll just show you this quickly and then I'll get into what it, what it is. So this is, you know, a stop run, 800 contracts, right? You would think, oh, wow, the 800, there's lots of sellers, right? You jump on and then it, you get screwed, part of my language. Why did you get screwed? Because there was no follow through through this area. It's very important to know. Now, if you're just looking at, you know, here's a perfect example. Let me pull it up here. 
Um, All right, here we go. So, so on two spots. Okay, hold on a second. Let's take a look here. This is happening in real time, so I may be putting on some trades here while we talk. And the market's not agreeing with my explaining everything first and then waiting <laughs> waiting for me so then I could put on trades. But anyway, so we got gold stops right here, right? So this is a um, 200 lot stop run, the biggest of the day, right? This is important. This is what you want to know. So if you're looking, if you're looking to buy gold right now, this is all live, right? What did I do with my chart there? And you notice how it's going off in all the different markets. That means there's big money starting to play out of nowhere, right? Let me find my gold. I lost that. One second here. Did I just X out of my gold chart? I don't know what I did with that gold shirt. That's not cool. Um, all right, so this is this is the bit longer term. So this is an important zone for where we broke down from. I want to show you the five minute chart because that's that's how I, I kind of go to the longer term and then drill down to the shorter term. But this is an important level. Why is this an important level? Because this is where we had a selling tail that we couldn't get through, move back down, right? This is a balance area now. Now we're trying to break out of this balance area. So if you're just trading off a bar chart, you're like, all right, we're breaking out of this balance area, man. I, I'm getting long. You want to know what's going on in the real time volume, right? So what this is a perfect segue, what we just saw. So this is a 200 lot stop run, which stretched from basically here. So you can see it's spike here, right? And I have thresholds, what's a lot, what's what's not based on my studies of this and trading it you know, every day for the last six months since it's been available, I know what's a lot and what's not in that this is part of my course too, where you know, you know, over, so gold, if it's over 150 stops, that's important, right? So this is a perfect example. So if this thing can't, so I may short this here, hold on one second. <clears throat> So this is exactly what I was talking about, in, like in soybeans, right? So if you see the stop run, you want to see this continue. You want to see the big money. You don't want to just see the dumb, the dumb money, the retail trader puke. You want to see this hold and then go higher, right? So this has got some things. See, see how this came down and how this, this is, you guys, I, I'm telling you, this is just golden. This is the best thing out there, right? So you can see that's where it started. Look where it came down and held. Now if this gets above here, I'm going to be a buyer. One because I know that it's. It's called, this is called in my course, a stop and hold. I know this, this had a chance to break through, it didn't, and now it's coming back above. So I'm gonna actually stop into this so I don't miss it. So if this trades above where this peak, you know, this was the peak and it pulled back, but it held, just like I showed you there. Let's see, it held that where it started, right? Now if it busts through, I'm playing the breakout of the balance area that I just showed you, and look what's above. This is how you use everything in conjunction. Look, look at the liquidity above. Where do you think we're going? You got some down there as well, but as for right now, this is the next, this is my next target. So if we bust out, if we break out here, I can bring up my five minute chart and let's do this. <clears throat> Change this to five. So this is a very important area, right? So this is how I trade, and this is how you guys need to trade too, especially you guys with the SI indicator. You're not using it as a vacuum. You're using it. One second here. This is a very important area. Why is this an important area? So I showed you the longer term stuff, right? Now this is where, this was a balance area that we broke down from, right? We tried to get through it. Here, no dice. Now we're back through. Now you're seeing big size come through. So if we can push a little higher, we're going to get through this and we're going higher, right? If it fails, if that stop, if that stop run turns into, I call it dumb and dumber, meaning it's the dumb money that there's no follow through, then we're probably coming down here, right? So that's how I use this, you know, it's kind of in a nutshell. I don't want to get into too much of the technical stuff there. Um, all right. So I'm long here. Right, so where do I put my stop? This is another reason why this SI is SI indicator is so incredible. Where do I put my stop? Well, what did I show you? Where did that start? Where did it come down to and test? Right, right there. Where does my stop go? Right there. So this helps me control my risk. So if I'm playing a breakout on a chart, right, on a on a bar chart, 
and I don't have this information, like 95% of traders do not have, where am I putting my stop? Am I putting it down here? You're gonna have to, right? Because you don't know, okay, is this a breakout? Um, well, I gotta put it, work it where I put it. Um, I'll put it down here, like under VWAP. Okay, now you're risking, you know, 90 ticks on the trade. If you have the SI indicator, you know you can control your risk. You know, hey, this thing needs to go and it needs to go now, like it's doing, right? Where are we out of here? Yeah, so I got in here. It needs to go now. It should not come back down here, right? If it comes down here, then you stop it out. Might be good if I put my stop in here, right? So I put it right below there. The one thing you do need to know, and I talk about this in my course as well, is markets like gold, crude, euro that are more thinly traded, they have a tendency to come, you know, so I showed that area where this started, right? Where the stop run started, right? They'll have a tendency, it doesn't happen every time, but you just gotta be cognizant of this, right? It'll come down, it'll pop through, stop you out, and then it'll go, then it'll go, right? So just know, so I know in my mind that this comes back down here and stops me out. And as long as it doesn't keep going down and it comes right back, I'm gonna, I'll give it one more chance and I'll put the stop in the exact same spot, right? So when I'm putting these trades on, I'm risking, you know, in my eyes, one one R one unit to make five three five ten ten times my money right so I already know based on what I showed you with this liquidity if I'm right here this market's going to this liquidity band so that is risking so I'm basically in close to even I'm risking what's this let me see here so I got in here at 03 and I'm risking down eight, probably 85 right so I'm risking what 17 ticks to make 60. That's how you want to trade. Trying to trade one to one with by hand against these algos, you're, it's not going to happen. And even if you do, even if you are successful a little bit for day, week, month, whatever, you're going to get grinded down by commission and everything else. So the way you want to trade is risking one to make three, one to make five. And so I'm not putting on trades unless I see sufficient volume in my SI indicator, have sufficient targets where I think it can make it to. And then you then you take the trade, right? And again, I'm probably right 50% of the time, if that. But when I'm right, I make five times my money, four times my money. Do you see? That's how trading works. It's not it's not that you are accurate 90% of the time. Nobody is. I mean, unless you can write programs, and even then, unless you get a commission break, you're still not going to make it in this business, right? So I'm along there. Uh, I kind of got off topic. I, again, the markets didn't agree with me to let me explain everything before they before I put on a trade. Um, but I'll pause right there, see if there's any questions, and I'll try to cover some of this other stuff um, that I want to get to first. So I'll keep this up. I'm long there. If I could stop, I'll give it one more shot. Um, so let's see what happens there. Bruce, any questions so far? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So let's see here. Um, and get your questions in uh, for Scott. Uh, let's see. Just a moment. I've been answering a bunch of them already. Uh, but... Um, uh, do you look at any market internals uh, like the VIX, the uh, DXY, their dollar index, or you know anything else uh, to confirm uh, bias? Absolutely. So I mean, for equities, yeah. So here's the VIX, right? This is the, the ETF. I'll keep an eye on that and confirm breakouts and things like that. So I don't, again, I don't use any of this stuff in a vacuum, but I'll I'll look at it and I'll use everything in conjunction, right? So I use this. I use my bar charts. I use my TAS. I use for equities. I'll take a look at, hey, what's the tick doing? NYSE tick. Most people know what this is, right? This is just the number of stocks up ticking versus down ticking in the NYSE, which is over 5,000 stocks, right? So if you get big extremes, that's telling you something. If you get over 1,000 stocks that are up ticking, over 1,000 stocks down, stick, down ticking, that gives you information as well. Or you want to see what the what the trend is for the day. So you can see this is kind of mixed. You know, we've been more down than up under under underneath the zero line than above it. Um, but again, I don't trade this in a vacuum. I, I keep an eye on it, right? Same with the ADD. This is important too. This is the advanced decline line, right? Where this tells you how many stocks, let's start from the start of the day here. How many stocks, so this was the start of the day, are um, advancing versus declining, right? So we started out extremely negative, right? We had over 2,000, almost 2,000 advanced declines. So yesterday it was under 2,000 all day, which would cause that, which caused that sell off. So again, you want to know this stuff because this is what drives the indices, like you know the the futures, the yes, the NQ. This the underlying stocks is what drives the market, right? So I look at this and I want to see, hey, are there divergences? So for instance, meaning, you know, if we come up to highs in the ES and 
that the ADD is not making a new high, right? So, so say the ES is, you know, making, this is the ES, pretend we're making new highs here, but then the ADD is right here. This is a difference. If, you, if you're making highs in the, in the indexes, you want to be making highs in the in the ADD too, because this is what drives the index. So if you're seeing a divergence, that's the reason to sell. Do I just blindly sell because of that? No, I used my book map, I used my SI indicator, but I know in the back of my mind, just like I know where the volume is, that resting liquidity, um, what you know, what I want to do. And the other thing I use too, so this is a task product as well. This is called the edge. This is telling you how many stocks are above or below their five minute task boxes, right? So I showed you this earlier. Right, so let's, this is the ES. So obviously the ES is made out of 500 individual stocks. That's why it's called the S&P 500, right? The index. This is this is like an example of a five minute box. So this is telling me what the thing I just looked at there is telling me for each individual stocks and it weights them based on the weighting and they have in the indexes, whether they're above the five minute box or below the five minute box, right? If all the stocks that comprise the index are below, that's something you wanna know. If they're all above, that's also something you want to know, right? Again, I don't trade this in a vacuum. I don't use the edge. I don't use this in a vacuum. I want to know. Hey, it, another way you can use this too is you want to know when stuff is extremely oversold. So if we get above the 66 point percent line, you want to know because all of all these algos are are based to revert to the mean, right? So meaning, say you're saying we're breaking down, and you you pull up this, and you're like, well, wait a second, we're pretty oversold there. I don't know if I want to jump on the sell side right now. I want to wait for this to pull back a little bit because it always does, right? So this is how you can use this. Another way you can use this is when these when these markets cross, right? When you, when you get this edge cross again, I don't want to get too much into this stuff right now. If you you know if you guys want to learn about it, contact me and we can do mentoring and all that other stuff. But um, this tell, tells me you know when you see crosses, right? This a lot of times like this is kind of toppy, but a lot of times you'll see a cross. That's a sign that we're going up, and then all of a sudden you'll see the market follow, right? So again, this this is a whole other topic, but to answer the question, those are the stuff I look at to, to trade. Again, I don't use anything in a vacuum. I use that to, to come up with my thesis on what's happening in the market, right? And then I then I confirm it with my real-time volume with BookBat. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, actually, um, <clears throat> uh, people are asking for um, uh, your settings uh, on the SI tracker. Yeah, so again, I apologize. I wanted to, um, let's see here. Did I step into this? Oh, so I, I put on a, I put on a small feeler trade earlier. Um, I'll get into this in a second, but this was what I call broken ice. You see the big iceberg down here. They tried to hold it and it got below. So this was a buy iceberg down here. I'm, I'm sure I'm probably confusing people because I'm off the topic how I wanted to present this, but this was 319. Um, buy icebergs, right? So you can see the market selling, meaning there were market aggressive market sellers hitting the orders, running into hidden icebergs, buy icebergs. That's really important information. And it went right through it, came back. This is a, this is a typical um, setup right here that I talk about. This is called broken ice. I talk about in my course. They try to hold it up, pushes through, comes back, retest, can't go higher. That's yourself. So when I saw that, um, I got into a piece, but my bigger one is down here. Why? Because this area down here, when you know, it was initially big sellers, um, I mean, a uh, retail puke that didn't hold, but now if it comes back down here, I want to get short there because now I think it's going to bust through. Why do I think it's going to bust through? Because of my longer term view here. This is how you use all this stuff in conjunction, right? I'm not using it in a vacuum, I'm using it all together. So I know. We are in downtrend, at least intermediate short-term downtrend, right? I know we broke, this was a really important zone. This is why this zone is here. We busted up, right? And again, you can, if you guys want mentoring, I'm available, contact me. I can teach you everything I, I know about why I draw these zones and what they mean and everything else. But the point is, this should have held when we came down here, if we were going higher, it busted through. Now what's happening? Oh, we just built another balance area. Balance area is two-sided trade where guys are basically placing their bets. What happens when the guys that place their bets long are wrong? They have to puke, right? So if we bust out of this to the downside, we're going lower. So that is my thesis of what's happening right now. So you saw where my real-time order is, right? I got in here because of the SI indicator. Paper tried to buy, big money tried to buy, they're wrong. You can see where my stop is. Now I'm gonna stop in even more 
that's this is basically breaking out of this balance area. I should wait. That's yes, sir. Um, this balance area here. And I know all this, right? So I'm using all this to be, and then this is my target down here. So if we bust down, uh, this is 997, I have that stop at, we're going down to 990. Is, and there's nothing here, right? So that's my target. That's how I trade that. So anyway, my settings, yeah. Um, there's so much to cover on. Do we have like four hours, Bruce? To <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you can go as long as you like, is in, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So, so again, I haven't even got into the to the voiceover yet. So one of the, I don't even want to say it's a problem because there's no problems with the SI indicator because it's the most incredible thing I have ever seen in my trading in 20 plus years, right? One of the issues I should say was, you know, if you're watching multiple markets, which I highly recommend you do, you're not knowing what's firing off in these other markets. Like if I'm staring at soybeans, I don't know that, you know, gold is, um, you know, they fired off in gold unless I'm looking right at it, right? So the developers came up very quickly. You know, I'm, I was telling them how important it is, and they did it immediately for us. They came up with voice alerts where, and that's what you guys have been hearing. There hasn't been that many, which is good because I'm talking, but I could put my trigger volume, right? So like I was telling you before, I have certain thresholds that I know when this SI indicator fires off, if it's if it's worthy of me paying attention or taking a trade off of or not, right? So I know soybeans, I need to see over 150 stop runs and icebergs, you can see here, right? So it will literally yell yell off in a computer voice, be nice. And it'll also give me a text alert. Here's the text alerts, right? So again, once you have this going, you're gonna be getting a lot and you may not hear everything. Is you know, that's another problem. All you gotta do is glance up and say, Oh, oh yeah, here, here, so here's that gold stop run we saw. Since we've been on, since that happened, there's an NQ stop, some P ice and Q ice, right? I haven't gotten into that. And it shows you the time. So you can go back to the chart and say, okay, when did that happen? These are huge to, to, to be able to monitor what you're doing. Um, what do I do with those alerts? So my settings are, um, so I have this on sliding mode. So there's different modes that you can um, use. You can use some, which sums up the entire day, sliding, which is basically what's inside the window, exponential, which is based, I've used, I use exponential in my course, so I'll show you what that looks like. I've gone to some, uh, I mean, uh, the sliding mode because it helps me understand better, like let's use, uh, actually, let's use it here. So, um, it helps me understand my area better than the than the exponential because exponential is more of a decay. This this shows you the exact area that this fired off in, like I showed you, this is, helps me place my stop, like I showed you where I put the stop, right? And this is working out too, and this is my target, right? So I'm actually gonna even, I don't I don't usually put resting orders. I wanna see how it reacts to this liquidity, but I will put um, to there a little bit below. And you, you again, if you're just trading off this liquidity as a target, you gotta be aware the algos know this liquidity is up here too. So a lot of times it'll come right to liquidity and it'll turn around and run away the first time because the algos know this big money, like I was telling you, the reason that the, that the big money has to use icebergs because they can't put big orders in the book. So what do you mean? What is going to happen when this comes up here? The algos see this big order in here, relative big order. They run it away from it, right? Because they know this guy wants to get filled or this house wants to get filled. So they try to screw them and make them chase it down, right? Then they turn around and whip shot up. This is what they do to you guys all day long, right? So um, my point is with liquidity, yes, it's a magnet, but you want to be careful, especially if I'm, not gonna, I'm on this webinar, so I'm not going to be able to be monitor it closely. I go a little bit below. I probably want to go a little bit below that. Um, because I know the algos will front run this liquidity at least the first time, right? So um, hopefully you guys put on this trade. This is working out so far. Again, this gold wouldn't, be, <laughs> it could easily go right back down. But again, I'm not trading off just the chart. I know why the chart is working, why this breakout is going to work, because this is what they call a stop and hold, right? It's stop run, that held, real money came in behind it. And that's why it's propelling upwards. And we broke out yeah. of, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, there's some questions about the setups, et cetera, and like why this, that, and everything. Um, I just wanted to mention, you're showing everything here. You're showing where you're putting the stops, where you're putting your targets, how you're managing it. You also gave the explanation why you're in this trade, but why did he come up with this? These are his proprietary uh, he he did the studies. Uh, he went back right. and he back tested and he looked into this. And these are some of his setups. Okay, right, exactly. if you want so more this, information, it's here on on the uh, uh, right. stop his education. 
Right. So this is the course right here, Bookman Marketplace. It's on my website as well. So you can go here, and this is based on my experience as a big time scalper, knowing what I have five specific setups you can see right here, right? It, 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 I have over 50 examples of five different setups that I take. I just shown you in the gold, this setup is called the stop and hold setup, right? That's one of the five that you get here. And what's great about the SI indicator, it works in every single futures market. It's not, it's not contained just to equities, it's, or the E-mini and NASDAQ. It's not just for gold. It's for any, any futures market that trades volume, it's relevant, right? So I went, I went and I studied this over months and months and based it on my experience as a scalper, as a big money scalper at one time, and how I used to trade and how I used to think. And that's how I came up with these incredible setups. And I, you know, I've sold a ton of them and many, and I, every person that's gotten it says how incredible it is. So, and, and the reason I know that is because I use it to trade. Like this isn't just me hypothetically saying, hey, try this. This is what I trade off of. I mean, you're seeing my trade right now, right? I'm in this trade because of one of these setups. Um, so the other thing you guys need to know too quickly is, um, so in the bookmap marketplace, you got to realize, so bookmap alone, so you go to bookmap, right? This is knowledge base, sorry. Bookmap is the software, right? It is the, the core software that, that I'm using, right? That, that's this, this is this whole thing, that's bookmap. You need to get a subscription to bookmap. That's the first, first step. The next step, and then they have, you know, you have the pricing. And if you go to my, Bruce put up the, if you go to my website, Bruce also has links in the room, you get, you'll get a discount on, on the stuff, right? So you can get global, global plus you, it's up to you to go in here and read about what all this is, as far as what you get, you know, global, global plus um, for the regular subscription. Now that is just, now you just have the base product that gives you all this information, the liquidity, um, you know, the order book, the ability to trade with your broker through this, all that stuff that does not include the SI indicator. That is a separate add-on. It's called an add-on. That's why it says right here. So this is back on the bookmap marketplace, MBO bundle. So again, this is based, this is the CME. Um, they are disseminating the CME MBO data in the SI indicator. So that's what I'm showing you, right? So you need this specific add-on, see it says add-on right there, add-on indicators, right? Right there, that's not the color I wanted, there we go, right there, right? So it costs this extra on top of your book map platform. You know, people complain, oh man, this is getting too expensive, I gotta pay for a book map, I gotta pay for my other charting software. Guys, if you're trading, 134 bucks is like, a, what, a, a point and a half on, on an E-mini, on, on a one lot, I mean, you know, th this is, your trading is your business. So, right, if you go out and start a business, you have to buy supplies, you have to pay workers. I mean, this is just part of your expenses of your business. If you want to be a serious trader, if you want to be a half-ass, I just want to screw around trader, then then screw around, trade on the charts and you're done. If you want to take this seriously and make a living out of it and become a millionaire trader, you need this information, right? And it's not me selling it. And I hate when people, you know, when I do webinars and people are like, oh, you're selling this stuff, selling book map. I'm not selling anything. I'm telling you what I use. And, you know, I was a million dollar trader. I, for, I've been a trader for 20 years. I know it works. I know it doesn't work. If you want to take my advice, great. If you don't, great. I'm not selling you anything. I'm telling you what I use to trade and how you can be a profitable, you know, uh, self-sustaining trader and do this for a living. If you don't believe me, then do what you want, right? But I, don't complain about costs because this is part of doing business. If you want all the information, you need to pay for the information. So. This is the MBO bundle. Then what you need is, which is, this is the most mind boggling thing in the world for me. So we talked about the CME market by order information data, right? Do you know how many, you know how many software providers have this data? One, one software provider provides you the most incredible data that's out there um, that all the big money uses that, you know, that disseminates this MBO data themselves. One, one data provider, Rhythmic, that's it. So anything else you're using, you know, the trade stations, the whatever else is out there, the data providers, you're not getting, you're not, you're not even getting full order book information. Like you're not getting real time info, um, like prices, deep prices. You're only getting, I think it's like 10 price prices up, 10 prices down from the current trade, right? So as far as liquidity in the book and things like that, you're not seeing the entire picture with, this other, with these other data providers. So my point is Rhythmic 
is your data provider that you is the only one that provides the um, the MBO information. So you got to subscribe to that as well, right? So there's costs involved for your business, right? So this is all separate. Book map is one thing. The SI indicator is another thing that is powered by Rhythmic, right? You can't get the MBO information unless you use a Rhythmic data feed. You can get the Rhythmic data feed through the book map marketplace. You can get it, uh, most brokers, I don't know, I, will, I don't know if I want to say most, but a lot of brokers will give you the Rhythmic data as well. So you can contact your broker, say, hey, do you have Rhythmic data? Okay, I want to switch to that. Then you're good to go here. You don't need to buy from Bookmap. If your broker does not, then you can get it through Bookmap. And then you need to get the actual um, SI indicator to add on, the thing that I'm showing you, that I'm using to trade, right? So that that's that. So that did I explain that, Bruce? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just to, just to understand that there's book map and then there's like the marketplace. The the um, uh, SI tracker is a very specific thing. It's only for CME group instruments. So if you're a stock trader, if you're a crypto trader, if you're trading the Eurex, you're a DAX trader uh, or ICE uh, exchange, this will not work. Okay. It's right. Let me interrupt CME. you. So let me interrupt you, Bruce. So, yes, like ICE, exactly, ICE, Urex, it doesn't work, but it works for every product under the CME umbrella. So even though there's a NYMEX, there's a COMEX, right? NYMEX is, is uh, oil, um, natural gas. COMEX is gold, silver. Even though those are technically separate exchanges, those are all under the CME umbrella. So you will get this data for those products. The only ones you're not going to get them for are, like you said, Bitcoin. You can't get the SI indicator for Bitcoin, the Bitfinex stuff, those things, and like the Euro and uh, um, uh, Eurex and ICE. Other than that, every other product, and you can see, like I say here, you know, if you look at this, where, here we go. Look at all, these are all the products that I, that, that I cover. Where's it at here? Um, actually, it doesn't say them all. I thought I had them. Oh, here, here they are right here. Right? So all these products, I have gone in and I have covered, and I know what thresholds are meaningful as far as when the stop runs occur, when the icebergs occur, right? You're not just taking every iceberg setup that occurs. So let me give you an example, right? So it's like this stop run right here, in gold wasn't relevant to me because it wasn't over 150 right here right this was a sell stop run this one was i know this is something to pay attention to because this is a lot of volume this broke my threshold my threshold was like 150 this was 200 plus that's why i took the long right so um that's what is explained in the course as well not only the setups it gives you the thresholds for each and every market so you know hey you know for instance like you know gold 200 is a lot E mini S and P. Let's see. Let's pull this up real quick. Um, two hundred is not a lot. So you can see here, you know, two hundred is fired off probably twenty times a day. I need to see over five hundred. This is four hundred right here, and that's still not my threshold. My threshold in E mini, and I'll even show you my settings for this one, is I use five hundred for my stops. I use 700 for icebergs. So if I don't get that, if I don't see at least 500 in the stop runs or at least 700 in my icebergs, I'm not looking to take a trade, right? I mean, to, I mean, if it's 498 or you know 678, I'll still potentially take the trade. But you see what I'm saying, like, and then I put these values in as my exact voice alert. So I will get a voice alert right here. You put in, you can put in whatever you want. So I could put in S&P stops moron. It, it's pretty funny. It'll read off whatever you put in here and it'll let you know, hey, pay attention, there's stops firing off, right? So that's why I wrote out literally S and P because the computer reads it that way. You can put whatever you want. I got S and P ice. Um, so when I know when a stop run over 500 fires off, it's going to alert me um, with the voice. I'm sorry, that this is text. The voice is right here, right? And you can check and uncheck it. It'll say S and P stops, as you've heard. And then it'll also give me a text alert. So this is what the developer just came out with not too long ago to um, help alert you if, if you're watching multiple markets, right? Even if you're not, even if you, you, know, you get up and you go make a sandwich, you got your computer on loud, you're gonna know, hey, something's going on. It just said S&P stops. I gotta run back in my office to, to check out what's happening, right? So, um, and the other, the way this is really new, the, the voice thing. So you can go here. I don't know if Bruce put this in here, but 
This is um, under the knowledge base. If you go in here, it explains exactly what this is. It explains, um, this is really technical stuff. Don't ask me about this stuff. That's developer stuff, but it explains what the types um, of, you know, there's a sum, exponential, reset, sliding. I use sliding. Again, you can go in here and read all about this yourself. Then it talks about the voice alerts. And then down here, I mean, it gets really technical for, for you computer geeks or you software geeks, this is all for you. And then um, down here, you can download this into your, if, so say you already have the SI indicator, which a lot of people do, you don't, you didn't even know this was available. You got to download it and you can bring it in here and then you can set up alerts. So it'll alert you, you know, voice what's going on and text. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. That was the one thing that was lacking in it where, because I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at 18 different markets, right? You can see all here. So this is the E-mini. Then you come over here. I'm looking at all of these markets. And I, in my course, I have thresholds for all these markets. So I know exactly what's a lot in the British pound. Again, like I was saying, a big, a big iceberg in British pound is over 70. I think it is. I don't have my thresholds right in front of me, but um, this is 95. That's a lot. Is 95 a lot in the E-mini and SP? Absolutely not. Do I want to know when 95 fires off in the S&P? Absolutely not. Do I want to know when it fires off in the, in the British pound? Yes, I do, right? So you can see here, this is actually a, nice. look at this. This is right here. This was what I call broken ice. So you can see getting off topic as usual. This was a big sell. And you just heard that, uh, that we'll see what that was, Canadian ice. This came down here, they tried to buy there was big sell ice, meaning there was big sell icebergs offered that you couldn't see in the order book. They were hidden. They tried to hold it, busted right through. That's this is what I call broken ice. So I the, the big money isn't always right. What you want to know, the area is important. So you want to know if you're looking to get long, you're like, hey, paper tried to hold this down. They're wrong. I'm in. My stop goes right here. I get in right here, right where this basically broke, right? So that this area stretched from here to here, right? From here to here, I'd say this was, this is what the sliding mode affords you to know, right? So there's this area. So when I see this bust above here, I know they're wrong. I'm getting long there. If I, again, if everything else conforms to my long idea, it's not just trading it in a, in a vacuum. I say this many times, you can trade these SI indicators as in a vacuum, but you need to be able to catch every single one, right? And you're not going to if you're trading by hand. So you gotta use bigger context ideas to, to justify your trades, right? So unless you know how to write programs and then you put your stop below where they where they took their stand, they're wrong. So when a lot of times the main setup I look for is when it breaks out of there, that's a good trade. And then it'll test that area. This, this has happens many times where it'll test the area and then it'll reverse. This one tested and went right through. Either way, you know, this is an important area. So watch what happened here, right? So you could have gotten a quick, you know, again, this is based on what you're seeing longer term. If you wanted to get long, you could have gotten long and you've made a little bit. If you're like, no, I want to only be short. So I'm going to watch this area. If this comes back through here and it can't hold, then I'm going to get short because I know paper took a stand in this area. And look what happens. It comes right through. And then this is this is the area that it busted through where you could have said, okay, now it got finally got through with this paper, took a shot. Now I'm going to get short, stops up here. And you can see it retested, tested, tested, then broke down, retested again, broke down. Again, it's not always which way the paper is going that you want to join in. You want to know the area that it happened, which is relevant. This is a very, this is a relevant area, right? And you can see once it finally broke, that's the area that held, held there, held there. Um, so let's see what happens here. So that's corn. So let's look what's happened in the Canadian dollar. <clears throat> so I just got an alert. Was here 52. So I look for over 50. Again, 50 is a lot in Canadian in the Canadian ice. This is this is paper trying to hold this market down. So you have resting liquidity in the book. You have hidden icebergs, sell icebergs. You have in the blue is is people buying, taking the offer, right? Aggressively taking the offer. Well, they're aggressively taking the offer, one into hidden icebergs, two into resting liquidity. That's good information. Then what do you do? They, well, what do I do? Then I go over to my TAS stuff and I say, okay, is this area relevant? Is this, do, do I want to consider a short here in, in Canadian dollar, right? So then I come over here to my Canadian. Sorry, my computer's a little slow. The TAS is, uh, Sierra chart's a little slow here. 
Um, and I don't even have the, sorry about this. Let's change this real quick. You can tell I don't trade Canadian dollar very often, but I have it up. Um, so while that's loading, what do I do? I go to the bar charts, right? And then I say, okay, what does it look like on the bar charts? Everybody's familiar with bar charts. Canadian right? ice. There's, there's more ice. I'm sure it's cell ice, right? So cell ice is trying to hold this area down. Is this area an important area? Well, let's see. Do I want to be looking long or short long term? I'm probably, just by glancing this, this looks like a some piece of ice is firing up too. So you can see how this can get a little crazy. Um, this is a down, this is a downtrend, right? Do I want to be looking long? Probably not. Depends if we were breaking out of a, a balance area, maybe the balance area was down here. Is do I have a relevant zone right here? Not really. Yeah. I mean, if it fails this one, this is right where this ice is coming in. So if this fails, yeah, I want to probably get short, right? So that's how I use this stuff. Then I glance at I look at my TAS to say, hey, what's going on in the TAS? So again, these are just mini market profiles. Okay, we're breaking out of the 10, right? This is the 10, this is the 30, this is the 60. Okay, do I really wanna be short here? Let's see, probably not. We're breaking out of a longer term box. We're actually oversold, right? I can get into all this with you guys. You can contact me or if you purchase TAS, I'll tell you all this. There's also discounts on my site for TAS. Anyway, do I want to get short now? Probably not. I want to look for broken ice because this is breaking yeah, out of this. Nice. This is breaking out of this. This is breaking out of this. All right, let's look at equities because that's what most people are trading. There's stuff going on here. Um, oh, by the way, this is shocking, isn't it? Well, look at this. Look where gold's going. Wow, it's going right to that liquidity. How did I know that? I must be psychic or, or I know where paper wants to get filled. So we got our signal here. We took our trade here. We knew where we... Took our trade up here when it broke through as a stop and hold is one of my setups we knew where our stop goes because of this you can control your risk now we have our target now i have my order right here what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to because since i'm watching it i want to bring up uh, equities too for you guys so because i know you guys are trading that too obviously <clears throat> um well, one second i'm just looking at this nasdaq this looks like a lot so you have big i just don't want to miss this trade what I usually do here, right? So I'm usually watching this. I want to see how it reacts to the liquidity. I'm not automatically getting out of liquidity. If it's just blue blue bubbles right through it, why would I get out? There's nothing but buyers. I want to see sellers fighting back, which this is what Bookmap tells you. This is what the red bubbles are when sellers come in. Do you see any red bubbles? I don't see any red bubbles. So why am I going to exit this position right at liquidity? Okay, there you go. There's the front run that I was talking about. I'm out of two. Got it? So you see how I did that? Right? I knew this was an important level. This was my target. Was I getting out immediately when I got here? No, I want to see how the market reacts. I didn't see any red. I mean, once I expanded it, I saw some red, but I had it like this. I want to see red come in, then I'll then I'll cover because I know there's I know there's algorithms that front run this liquidity. Right. So I saw this. I'm out. I'm out of half. Now what I do, this is actually, you didn't even see this. So this is almost threshold. This is this is threshold. One, I was just saw 146. So again, my threshold for stop runs is 150. This is important. This is another stop run. So this is the way, okay, so we have the original position on. Now you can be adding on subsequent setups. So this could be a stop and hold as well. I didn't even see this when I got out of this. I probably would have got out where it started. Let's see threshold, let's see where threshold hit here. So the stop run was right here. Actually, it was more now. It was 159. It was right about here, right? So start, we'll see here. So I could have just, this is technically a stop and hold. This is just like the, the um, this is just like the setup we just took to get long here, right? So it should not violate this area. If it does, then I'm out of my whole position because then this is bearish that this is, this is turning into a dumb and dumber. What's a dumb and dumber? It's a stop run, right? That's not, it has stopped run that doesn't follow through. We saw the stop and hold earlier that followed through. Now you're getting, buying retail puking stop pukes buy stops that there's no money following big money following through right and you know this liquidity is here that it's not really getting up to we'll see it's still holding right if this holds and busts through this liquidity i can add this as a brand new trade knowing where to put my stop right or again this is perfect for you guys too you know mo most guys trail stops to their money right because they don't want to give back their money you don't trail stops to not give back your money. Your trail stops based on market structure. Now, 
I'm long, I'm still long two here, right? Now I can trail my this original two lot, I can trail that to here, right? Why? Because there was another SI indicator set up. Is this turning in a stop and hold? Yes. So watch this. So I'm long there. I, mean, I just got, I re-entered my position. I probably will add more. I want to see how it reacts with this liquidity. But I have, now I can attain, I can control my risk. This, if I'm wrong here, big deal. Then I lose, you know, 20 ticks. Great. If I'm right, this might bust through here and run 100, right? So again, this affords you having this information. Even if you don't add your trade, it helps you move your stop to relevant areas. This is a relevant area because the stop, this is a stop and hold right now. So if it comes back and it doesn't hold, I'm out. It's as simple as that, right? I mean, trading's not simple by any means, but when you use this the right way, it helps you understand what is going on in the market. If you're using a bar chart, again, what do you what do you see here? Oh, I see we're breaking out. Oh, great. Well, what does that what does that mean? Where do you put your stop? So if you get long right here, right? Where this is definitely a breakout. This is the whole area I was telling you about. This is where we broke down from. This is where we retested, failed. Now we got through, we built another little balance here, and now we're breaking out. Okay, now oh, nice. you're using just charts. Where where are you where are you putting your stop? Where do you put your stop at? Below here, here, high volume note of this little balance. Where do you put it? You're risking this is you know, this is 60 ticks away. When you have the SI indicator, you can understand where, what areas are relevant. You say to yourself, okay, this needs to this needs to keep going. This should not violate where this stop run started. If it does, then it's a dumb and dumber. It means there's no real money behind it. I don't want to be long anymore if this thing cannot get some real buying behind it. A retail stop puke, buy puke is not real money unless it, you know, that continues. So right here, you're I may get stopped and I'm fine with it. This is my, this is my again, you, but you know when you get stopped, you know why you got stopped. You're not just ho hoping and un not understanding, oh, okay, well, why did that just pull back? Right, you know, hey, the stop, these retail trailers, traders, puke, and it had a change, and the analysts so quickly, they both got filled too. This is another thing I look at. This is also this is separate from the SI indicator. I look for, you know, if this thing's going to go, sorry, if this thing's going to go, it needs to. Why is this not drawn here? Because oh, I have the eraser on this way. <laughs> you know, these guys, so the paper got their wish, right, uh, as usual. Now this needs to hold. This liquidity needs to hold. So I got a double reason to get out. If this is wrong, I'm out right here because this liquidity didn't hold. This liquidity didn't hold. Now this is this should go. If it doesn't go, I'm out. If this if this breaks above, I'm probably gonna add two more, right? And I'm using that based on this liquidity. Let's see what it does here. <clears throat> so you see how you use all this stuff together, right? It's not just the SI indicator. It's not just the liquidity. It's just not your bar charts. It's just not TAS. I mean, look at TAS. I already know what it looks like, but TAS. I'm probably going to cost myself that trade to add to that, but here's TAS. I mean, look at this. It's all in conjunction, guys. Like, this is how you make money trading. Breaking out of the 60, and we're oversold, right? That's a good sign. Breaking out of the 30. Already broke out of the 10, right? I don't want to get into the confusion you guys with my profile stuff, but you see what I'm saying, right? It's not, you know, it, when you buy the when you buy the course, if you get the course and you learn the setups, you're not using the setups in a vacuum. You're using it with what makes sense to you. So even if you don't understand what I'm doing in these charts, it doesn't matter. You have things that make sense to you in your charts, right? Or you probably wouldn't even be on this webinar. So use this information in areas that make sense to you. It's that easy. It's, that, it's not easy. It's simple, right? You want to know, hey, I so say this was a 200-day moving average that you love to trade on or a Bollinger Band or whatever, whatever else that you guys are using. When it comes to that area, you want to know, hey, is the real money, is the real money playing games here? What's paper doing? Is there, are there big sell icebergs? Are there big buy icebergs? You see what I'm saying? That's why you need Bookmap to complete the picture. If you're not using Bookmap, you are not complete, you do not have the complete picture. I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not selling you anything. I'm just telling you like it is. You don't have, you may be able, you may be a profitable trader. Great. You can be even more profitable if you know what's really going on with the big money. Is that, is that easy? Honestly, simple. We keep saying easy. Anything else, Bruce? I get, no, I, I mean, I, 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 I think, I, I think the, the examples uh, or a lot of the questions are, are very simply answered by looking at what your activities are right here. 
I mean, it's answering these questions. Guys, I mean, I'm getting all sorts of questions about all sorts of things that are very distractive to um, uh, uh, the education here that, that Scott's providing and the trading that Scott's providing. I mean, I, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I, I just think that it's probably better for, for all. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions, but I'm going to uh, ask Scott more questions about uh, your, your questions about, um, uh, uh, you know, specific things here uh, in, in uh, what, what he's looking at, et cetera. Uh, because uh, uh, we, we could just go on and on and on. Like we've, we've covered all these questions. All the resources are out there uh, if you're interested. Uh, so um, uh, please, uh, yeah, reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Happy to answer them for you. Okay. I, I know that uh, there's all sorts of different things. If you're new to futures and uh, SI tracker and rhythmic data, et cetera. Uh, but as Scott is saying, I mean, this is the industry, right? This is like, uh, you know, how it is. Like uh, uh, you want quality data. If you don't want quality data uh, and if you don't want these tools, well, then you can go with what you know the the broker gives you or um, uh, the free tools that are out there, um, and they're there's they're not going to offer you some of the uh, insights that you're getting here um, with some of these other other tools that that Scott's presenting. Okay. Um, yeah, more than insights, it's it's what's what's happening. You know, so this is a good example on Nasdaq. I didn't I didn't take this trade because I was chirping about everything else, but. Um, so you saw, you see right here, right? So this is a, this is a big buy iceberg. What happened here? Let's take a look. Came up here, market sellers. They're like, oh, I'm going to push this down. No, you're not. You're going to run right into a big buy iceberg, right? So this is, again, this is over threshold. I look for over 120 NASIC in the NASIC. This is 186. That's substantial, right? What happened? All these guys that were, thought they were being aggressive and were going to push this market down, what did they run into? They ran into a hidden buy iceberg right at this price. What did it do? It, they were like, oh, it just bounced, it bounced right off it because they were running into a wall of orders, right? This is the wall of orders. I'll stop, came back, look where it retested, right there. This is the best, one of the best signals here. So this is my Titanic stuff, right? It's running into an iceberg. The market ran into an iceberg and guys are like, oh, this isn't going down. I need to puke out of this position, right? Look at this. I mean, this is this is textbook here. Here's the sell iceberg. I mean, this is the sell. Here's the buy iceberg right here. Moved away, came back, ordered it retest. Retest fail. It's one of my favorite things, right? I talk about this in the, in the trade room all the time when we trade this. Here it is. Moves away, retest, holds. You see the buy and come in. You're long. Your stock goes right there. Boom. That That's in a vacuum. That's just using this. Then what do you see? The way I trade, right? Take the five minutes. Was that relevant? Yeah, that's a breakout of. This was a balance area. This was a little balance area. This was through my zone that I drew longer term stuff. <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to get into that stuff today, but the point is, I was taking that long because this is bullish. You look at again, and I do this. This is this is my process, right? This is what I do when I take my trades. I don't just trade. You don't just trade. So you get in the SI indicator, you get the course, you're not just trading the setups in a vacuum unless you can trade every single setup. You want bigger picture thoughts. This is the bigger picture, right? This would have gotten me in. Break out of the of the 10, break out of the 30, break out of the 60. I want to be long. Break out of the market long-term market profile, right? I don't want to be getting short. So my point is if you right now, you know, in that area, or even up here. Right. So right now, if a if a short SI indicator, one of my short setups fire off. Right. So say it was a dumb and dumber. Right. Say, say you saw a big, huge stop run, buy stop run. Right. And it moves up here and then it fails. Do I want to be getting short? Absolutely not. OK. Is it a short setup SI indicator? Right. It sure is. But bigger picture, bigger context tells me I don't want to get short. Well, if I'm long, will I peel out of some of my position? Yes, I will. I will not turn around and get short, though, because I just showed you four reasons why you don't want to be getting short up here, right? So the point is, when you guys start using this stuff, don't use it in a vacuum. You need to have the big picture in mind. Then you get all your ducks aligned in a row. And then you have an A-plus trade, right? So, again, SI indicator is incredible, but unless you can use – Unless you can write programs and take every single setup, which I think you could be profitable if you do that. Otherwise, most 99.9% .9 of us retail traders are clicking mouse. 
So you've got to use bigger picture ideas in your trading and then use the SI indicator information to confirm it. And I didn't even get into this liquidity tracker, right? So this, this black line, all that is is showing you what's in the order book and how the orders are stacking up in the order book. So instead of trying to add them all up here, what's on the bid, what's on the offer, um, you, you can just look right here. This is net net, right? So I know in this area, they're trying to hold this down, right? So another thing I want to show you that was telling, um, I'm sure that's probably confusing because I didn't really cover that, but you can see here on this move up in the ES, look, look where this thing's been all day long, this, this uh, liquidity tracker. Since we opened, right? So this is, again, this has been running since last night. So 8.30 is my open um, on Pacific time. This liquidity tracker has been mainly negative. And then look as we get up here. Yes, it's, it's taking this into consideration, this resting liquidity. So the way, so my settings for liquidity tracker quickly, again, this is a whole nother topic. Um, so it's given me 10, 10 price levels up, 10 price levels down, what's in the order book. And it's graphically representing it here. So it's just easy for me to look and say, okay, hey, are, are there more bids in the order book than offers or vice versa? It's vice versa. There's more offers in the order book. It's under zero. This is the zero line. There's more offers. That's important information to know. The way you can use this is one, you know, if you start getting, if you get a boat, again, this is in a vacuum. I'm not using this, looking at my chart stuff, but say you get a bearish, a bearish um, one of my SI indicator setups. And then you also know, hey, they're trying to hold this market down by the liquidity in the book, right? That's another reason to go short. Another way you can use the liquidity tracker. So say it came up here the first time, like right now, and you saw it's all below zero. Say, say we pull back, right? <clears throat> so we pull back here and then we come up again. And then you see this liquidity tracker. I'm even gonna, I'm so high tech, I'm gonna actually use the color. You see it above zero and we're back up here. That's telling as well. You, then you say to yourself, hmm, uh, whoever's in the order book now wants to buy versus last time. This is a divergence, right? This is like a positive divergence where you say, and then you say you see a, an awesome um, buy iceberg come in. Again, awesome technology I have here. You see a buy iceberg. You're like, okay, now I have paper wanting to buy. We're back in this area. Now in the order book is also, there's more buyers than sellers. And we start to break out, I'm long, right? That's how you can use this stuff. It's incredible, guys. I'm telling you, it's the best thing. I've been saying it since day one. You know, there's guys out there trying to refute my ideas and icebergs don't work and blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, in my 20 years of trading, being one of the biggest scalpers in the world at one time, knowing how order flow works, book map is the most powerful thing I've ever seen. And when you add in the SI indicator, it's just off the charts. We must. Period. End of story. All right, Bruce, anything else? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's just, um, uh, if we, maybe maybe uh, run through some of your setups again, like uh, or some of the trade uh, activities, just to kind of review or revisit, because um, uh, all these, I, I, we, keep, we keep on covering now, I mean, for several webinars, we've been covering the same content about, you know, uh, uh, people, um, there's questions about how to operate the software or, you know, what the deals are, et cetera, how to get it, what's required. It's a very specific thing. I just don't want to spend too much time on that. We've, we've covered it uh, and you can reach out to us at support. Uh, and then in terms of like skepticism about it, look, I mean, this is what he uses and this is the hey, Look right here. How's it here? Here you go. So we showed you, so this is the other thing that helps you guys with, right? Most traders, if you're, if you're a human being, you struggle, you're looking at your P&L. You see it go, oh yeah, I got it. Yeah, oh no, no, oh crap. Oh wait, oh, oh no. So again, this helps you understand what areas are important. If this doesn't trade below here, I don't care. It could do this for the next four hours. It's like, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, especially if I'm not seeing anything down here, this, you guys, this is, you, you don't think the algorithms see the same thing I'm seeing or the same thing that the book map provides. They have this information and now you have it, right? So you can see, look look where this thing just pulled back. You guys, this is live trading. This isn't me showing you charts of cherry pick ideas. Look at this. Look, this is the, why do you think I put my stop here, right? Let me see what's going on in the SP here in a second. Why do you think I put it right there? Because this is, the, this is where this stop run fired off. This is where it needed to hold if it was going higher. If it broke this, it was not going higher right now. And then I wait for my next long setup, you know, somewhere else. My point is, look where this stopped. This is not coincidence. This is not coincidence, right? This is where this stop run came in. 
And this is a stop and hold. The stop run came in the dumb money. Yeah, it was dumb money at the time, but then someone's coming up and keeping it higher, right? If it came back and flew through here, that then it would be a dumb and dumber and I want to get out. But you can see, you know, it could do this. This is going to help you guys mentally not be freaking out on every pullback. You know, yeah, I can get stopped out and that's fine, but I'm stopped out for a reason. I'm not stopped out because I don't want to give back my profit. I'm stopped out because something that in real market volume, real market structure was violated, right? Play your games all day long, algos. I'm not going to be part of it. You know, it's like, I'm not going to panic out of it. That's what they want you to do. Why do you think this happens? They know the areas where they can play these games. What do you think this is? Look, look at this. Look at this chart. Look at the algos in here. What do you, what do you think this Christmas tree stuff is? That's them knowing the areas that they can screw around with the retail trader and take your money. Don't you think it would behoove you to know where the real important areas are and not be panicked out when they start playing their games? That's the whole point of this, guys. I mean, I don't know how much clearer I can be, right? You know, and if I get stopped out, it's fine. I gave it a shot. It's just, it's not going to go. But I got stopped out in an area that's, that I know is important, that is relevant, not just because they're pushing it back in my face and I don't want to give back $400, right? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so, I mean, and this is this is what you study. <laughs> This this is your the, the this is your strategy, right? Exactly. So I mean, uh -huh. uh, th because there are questions about like, uh, well, what if he gets stopped out? What do you do? I mean, like, this is what you studied. This is what you trade, and you do that's, it again. Right, and, again. and that's what, right, and that's what the course. That's what the setups tell you how to do it. How to, what to look for, what to look for if you're wrong. When you should you re-enter? When should you not? What's a lot? What's a little versus thresholds? So look at Nasdaq right here. Not that I want to go short uh, because of what I just showed you as far as the breakout. But if this, first of all, I'll tell you right now, if this fails, see, th this is the other thing too, right? You, This is important information, right? We just showed how this was a long setup, right? Just literally, I just talked about this at the time, right? This area is important. This was a lot. This was a big sell iceberg or buy iceberg. If this gets back below there, that's telling me something. It doesn't mean you turn around and get short. I don't want to get short right here yet. Yet, I know in my mind, okay, wait a second here. This thing should have broken out, right? Like we were saying why it should have broken out early. This, this was a balance area. This was a smaller balance area above my zone, should have gone. Now I'm like, mm, wait a second here. So even if you did get long and you get, you get stopped out, okay, you have a losing trade. Now all of a sudden you have all this information though. It's like, this thing should hold this right here. This is like the high volume note of this. This thing should hold and go. If this thing busts through here and then busts through this area, this is basically the balance area from the real trading hours today. You want to be short. And the other thing in the back of your mind is you know that this iceberg, I mean, there's going to be more as this thing free falls. This iceberg is violated. I mean, look at this. Now look, look where we're coming back. Now watch what happens here. You want to see if this can get back above this exact area. This is how you use this stuff, right? Not that I want to, I'm not getting long. I'm not getting short here. I want to see how this reacts. This is the area. It violated it. Now we're retesting. If this turns around and fails, that is very, very important information. Not that you're just blindly putting on a short right here, but it's telling you, hey, this didn't hold. If it gets back above and then you start seeing some bullish signals, then yeah, you can get long. But right here, I want to know, I want to see what, how this reacts to where this came in, right? That that's how that's how I trade. So what? I mean, this is this is textbook. Let's see how this works. I mean. It, it, this shouldn't have failed first first of all this thing should have kept going kind of like gold did so we'll see i mean i i think it's going to turn again i'm not getting short because this still isn't a short setup for me and what i look at right you got we're still bullish right chart wise we're still bullish task wise what's going to get me short is if we start to violate those areas i showed you if we start to a lot of times this will draw a new box Right? And we start to violate the new box like this one. See how this one just drew? Now, if this can't get above there, you can see here. Right? If this can't get above this resistance level, that's telling. We draw a new one, can't get above it. That's telling. And that, so I know that from a chart perspective, a task perspective. And then I also know, right, because I showed you in the chart, and then I know the real-time volume. Hey, do you see, guys? Look at this. This is, again, this is real-time trading. This isn't me cherry-picking. This was the area. This is where you could have gotten long. You look golden, right? You could have put your stop right there. Yeah, if you were long, you got stopped out. Look what it did when it violated this area, came back, retested, failed. This exact area, 
this you have a, if you're using bar charts you don't know any of this you, you have no idea why this failed what what area this needed to hold for this to remain along right so if i'm long my stops there right like we talked about getting long in this area my stops right there this comes back you're saying to yourself okay oh i'm still good i'm still good right i'm getting out once it blows through here which it did and then it retested and failed again my point is if you're using a bar chart you don't know any of this you're just like well, what wait what, what just happened there why i thought this was a breakout this was this looks so good like equities always go up and you know what wait what what happened here right not to say it can't turn around and go up again but you know real time what happened guys you have no idea like literally 99.9% .9 of traders have no idea what's happening in real time volume you have this information you know hey big iceberg took a stand here oh they're wrong blew right through there retested that exact area now again it doesn't mean you just you could short say you get say you have something else say you're trading off the again i don't have this stuff on my chart because i don't use it but say the 200 day moving average is right here that's what you use you're like okay hey that was a failed buy iceberg we retested the 200 day moving i'm going short right and you're using the real time volume to justify it you see you see how you use this stuff all together to make incredible trades <coughs> sorry anything else bruce i got one more. Uh, no, some, uh, these are, they're just, they're very, very helpful, Scott. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, you're, you're showing your strategy, not only are you showing it and talking about it, I mean, you're, 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 you're actively trading it. Um, and, uh, uh, and it, it's something you studied, uh, you're a professional trader, you know that, uh, not all work out, but, uh, this is within what your, uh, uh, statistics or your uh, uh, methods are, and uh, and you just you you uh, execute. Uh, so right. you and trading, sorry, trading is go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, just it, and you keep it very very simple too. Well, that's what I've always done, right? I mean, you know, I don't think I'm an Einstein. I don't think I'm an idiot either. But I know when it comes to trading you want to keep it as simple as possible as far as what you have on your charts what you're looking at because most traders have so much crap on their charts one's given a, a bearish signal another one's given a bullish signal this one's saying we're range trading like you can't make a decision right you want to you want to to get your trading down to where you can make clear cut decisive decisions right not that it's always clear cut but when you use you know only as you know the, the core things it's going to help just help your brain you know, trading is hard enough than confusing yourself, right? When you take a trade, you want to have conviction in what you're doing. You don't want to be just hoping it works out. You want to be like, okay, I have this, I have this aligned, I have this aligned, I have Taz aligned, I have my charts aligned. My real-time volume is telling me I'm right. Are you going to be right 100% of the time? Absolutely not. Not, but when you're right, you're going to be make, risking one to make five, to make 10, to make 20. That's the whole point. And you can control your risk with the SI indicator, right? Knowing and the, and the liquidity. You know, and the and the liquidity tracker, things like that, right? There's so many other things that could probably be gleaned from this. Just the liquidity tracker alone, right? I mean, I've done very little. My my, my main research has been on the SI, the stops and the icebergs. Um, and from what I hear, Bookmap, the developers are coming out with some incredible stuff. You know, not, I can't even under I can't even fathom what could be more incredible than they already have. So that's exciting as well. So I'm just, I mean, again, this is what I use to trade. And you know, if you guys see relevance in it, then then great. If you don't, then you know, good luck to you. I don't. That's that's the bottom line. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you're 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 trading your plan. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, so, uh, guys, uh, I'm putting the uh, links in here. Uh, there's been so many questions about so many different things. I'm trying to keep up and, and trying to answer them all. Um, and I I really, I mean, we have Scott here. Uh, an expert trader, expert scalper, uh, and um, uh, like to keep the discussion more online. We've already gone an, uh, almost an hour and a half here, so we're going to have to wrap it up. Uh, I put Scott's information, contact information, um, into the chat, so you can reach out to him uh, as well uh, as support at bookmap.com if you have any questions regarding um, any of the uh, products from Bookmap. Uh, so um, uh, other than that, like uh, I, I, we pretty much answered um, all of the questions here. Uh, if, is there anything uh, kind of last uh, uh, parting words that uh, you'd like to leave us with, Scott? Um, no, I mean, I just hope it's eye-opening for a lot of traders. Like, you know, if you're just using bar charts or just, you know, 
moving averages, stuff like that. You just don't have all the information. It is what it is. I mean, you know, it's just that's you want to know what the big money is doing in the markets because they're the ones that drive the markets, right? You want to have an idea what's going on there. You know, I talk, I preach about it all the time. And, you know, again, I, I provide mentoring. You can contact me for that stuff. If you have any questions, you can be on my email. Um, you go to my site, there's discounts for Bookmap, just the regular regular software. And then also the TAS products, there's all, there's, I didn't even get into the spot gamma stuff. I think you had him on the other day. I really want to listen to that webinar. Um, all this stuff is, is um, it's basically, it's just the, uh, what the options dealers, where they're hedging with their futures. So you know there's gonna be reactions at these levels. So you can see like this is support right now, right? So I don't even start to get into this, uh, but watch that webinar that it was, I think it was on Wednesday. This is very helpful. This is a pretty cheap service that you can add on to the book map. Just another incredible thing that book map provides that you can add on to it, put it in here. You can trade off book map. I mean, it's, again, it's, I'm not selling anything guys. I'm telling you like it is. So um, if you think you can do better without it, then, you know, good luck to you. But Again, reach out to me, mentoring. Um, I showed you guys the SI indicator course. Again, I've got nothing but great reviews on it. Even, even if I didn't, I know it works for me. So I basically spent a lot of time on this and you know, it gives you all the five specific setups that you can use in areas that make sense to you um, and all those different markets, right? This is, you know, it works. This is why how you know it, it's relevant because it works in every market. You just need to know your thresholds and what, what to look for. And when you get everything aligned, then you take a trade. If you can get that, um, again, hopefully you guys understood about you need the SI indicator or you need the MBI bundle that gives you the SI indicator. You need to, to power it by Rhythmic. This is all separate from the actual book map platform. Yes, it's an extra expense. Yes, it's going to make you a lot more money, you know, having this information, in my opinion. So um, that's about it. <clears throat> yeah, no, lots of thank yous coming in. Um, so, um, uh, again, uh, you know, I, I, how many have you done with us now? Like, uh, I don't know, half a dozen or more uh, webinars. Uh, and it's been uh, like nine, actually, eight or nine. Eight or nine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of just have to join the bookmap team here, basically. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much, Scott. Um, uh, excellent, as always. Uh, guys, lots of things to learn here. Uh, and um, uh, take away to uh, uh, integrate into your style of trading. This is the way that Scott trades. Okay, that's why we have these webinars. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks very much, Scott, and uh, we'll do it again. Awesome, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Um, I hope you guys got something out of it and reach out to me for questions and good luck trading. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>